Hello students! Welcome to Math and Magic. For this video, we are going to solve equations transformable into quadratic equations. In general, there are certain equations that are not really quadratic but can be transformed or reduced into quadratic equations. Most of these equations may appear complicated but when transformed into quadratic form, their solutions can easily be solved. Here are examples of such equations. x raised to 4 plus 8x squared plus 16 equals 0. x raised to 2 third plus x raised to 1 third equals 8. 5 over x plus 3 plus 2x over x minus 3 equals 36 over x squared minus 9. And others. Also, it is important to know that the number of roots will be at most the same as the degree of the equation. Now, to better understand the solving process, here is our first example. Determine the roots of x raised to 4 minus 13x squared plus 36 equals 0. When given this item, we first need to make sure that the equation is in standard form or is equated to 0. In the example, the equation is already in standard form, so we will proceed to reducing this into quadratic form. Here we will assume that x squared is equal to a variable. Let's say p. That will be p equals x squared. We do this so that we can lower the value of the highest exponent 4 to make it quadratic or equal to 2. Now since p is equal to x squared, by squaring both sides, that will be p squared equals x raised to 4. Next, substitute variable p to x. Equation can now be written as p squared minus 13p plus 36 equals 0. In this part, we can already use different methods of solving quadratic equation like factoring, completing the square, and quadratic formula. Using factoring method, Factors of the left side of the equation are quantity p minus 4 and quantity p minus 9. By zero product property, p minus 4 will be equal to 0 and p minus 9 equals 0. Now transpose the constant terms to the right side. Values of p are 4 and 9. Take note that these values are not yet the roots. Remember that we make an assumption earlier that p is equal to x squared. So to solve for x or the roots, we will substitute x squared to p. That will now be x squared equals 4 and x squared equals 9. Now get the square roots of both sides. Hence the values of x are positive and negative 2 and positive and negative 3. If you want to check whether these values are correct or not, you may substitute this to the original equation. Let's say the root negative 2. Substituting this value in the equation, x raised to 4 minus 13x squared plus 36 equals 0. That will be the fourth power of negative 2 minus 13 times the square of negative 2 plus 36 equals 0. Fourth power of negative 2 is positive 16. Square of negative 2 is 4 times negative 13 is negative 52, then plus 36. 16 minus 52 plus 36 is equal to 0. Thus, this root is correct. For our second example, solve the roots of the equation x raised to 2 third plus 2 x raised to 1 third equals 8. Again, we first need to make sure that the equation is in standard form. Here we will transpose positive 8 to the left side. It will become negative 8. Equation now is x raised to 2 third plus 2 x raised to 1 third minus 8 equals 0. Next, we need to set the highest exponent of this equation equal to 2. In this case, we will assume that p is equal to x raised to 1 third. So that when raised to 2, it will become p squared equals x raised to 2 third. Recall that in loss of exponent, particularly power of a power, when a variable with an exponent will be raised to another value, the exponent will multiply. In this case, the exponent 1 third raised to 2 will be 1 third times 2 or simply 2 third. 
Now, substitute P to X. Equation will be P squared plus 2P minus 8 equals 0. By factoring, factors of the left side are quantity P plus 4 and quantity P minus 2. By zero product property, we'll equate both these factors by 0. Those are P plus 4 equals 0 and P minus 2 equals 0. Now, transpose the constants to the right side. Values of P are negative 4 and positive 2. Again, these are not yet the values of the roots. Here, we will substitute x raised to 1 third to P. Those are x raised to 1 third equals negative 4 and x raised to 1 third equals positive 2. To solve for x, we will raise both sides by 3 or have it cubed. The cube of 1 third is x, cube of negative 4 is negative 64, and the cube of 2 is 8. Hence, the solution of the equation x raised to 2 third plus 2 x raised to 1 third equals 8 are negative 64 and positive 8. For our last example, find x in the equation 5 over the quantity x plus 3 plus 2x over quantity x minus 3 equals 36 over quantity x squared minus 9. When given this kind of item, we need to remember operations on rational expressions. Also, there is a need for us to identify the values of x that will make the expression undefined. In this example, since x plus 3, x minus 3, and x squared minus 9 are the denominators, the restricted values are 3 and negative 3. Now, transforming this equation to quadratic, we first need to identify the LCD or the least common denominator of x plus 3, x minus 3, and x squared minus 9. Recall that x squared minus 9 is factorable. It is the product of quantity x plus 3 and quantity x minus 3. Thus, the LCD is x squared minus 9 or quantity x plus 3 times quantity x minus 3. Next, after we identify the LCD, we will multiply this expression in both sides of the equation. x squared minus 9 times 5 over quantity x plus 3, product is 5 times quantity x minus 3. The expression x plus 3 will be cancelled out. For the next term, 2x over quantity x minus 3. Multiplying this by the LCD, the denominator x minus 3 will also be cancelled out. That will become 2x times quantity x plus 3. On the right side, 36 over x squared minus 9 times the LCD. Here, x squared minus 9 will be cancelled out. The product is 36. Equation now is 5 times quantity x minus 3 plus 2x times quantity x plus 3 equals 36. By distributive property, 5 times quantity x minus 3, that is 5x minus 5 times 3 or 15. Then plus 2x times x is 2x squared. 2x times 3 is 6x. Then equals 36. Combining like terms, 5x plus 6x is 11x. For the constant terms, we will place those on the left side of the equation. Remember that we need to have a quadratic equation written in standard form. Here, we will transpose 36 to the left side. It will become negative 36. Combining negative 15 and negative 36, that is negative 51. Equation will be 2x squared plus 11x minus 51 equals 0. For this example, let's try to use quadratic formula to solve for the roots. The formula is given by x equals negative b plus and minus the square of quantity b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. In this quadratic equation, a or the numerical coefficient of the quadratic term is equal to 2, b or the linear coefficient is 11, and the constant term is negative 51. Substituting this in the formula, that will be x equals negative 11 plus and minus the square root of 11 squared, minus 4 times 2 times negative 51, all over 2 times 2. 11 squared is 121, 
Negative 4 times 2 is negative 8, times negative 51 is positive 408. Adding 121 and 408, the sum is 529. That is the value of our radicand. Now, getting the square root of 529, that is positive and negative 23. Solving for x, negative 11 plus 23 is positive 12. Dividing that by 4 is positive 3. Now, for the negative root, negative 11 minus 23 is negative 34. Dividing that by 4 is negative 17 over 2. Values of x are negative 17 over 2 and 3. Now, as mentioned earlier, x value should not be equal to negative 3 and positive 3 because it will make the denominator equal to 0. And that is undefined. This value is called extraneous root or solution. By definition, an extraneous root is a root that emerges from the process of solving the problem but is not a valid solution to the problem. Therefore, the only solution of the equation is negative 17 over 2. Thank you for watching. God bless.